Hello, my retro friends. Thank you for finding my channel, Mike the Retro Realtor. Today, we're going to talk about the 2024 election and the effects on the current real estate market. Politics, 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 politics. Yes. There is actually a noticeable dip in October, even into September. On top of the seasonal slowdown as we go into winter, more people are sitting on the sidelines to see the outcome of the election. About 90 days out from the election, you will see a uh, slowdown depending on the region, and from 10 to 20%. So it is noticeable. There are basically three reasons why the markets kind of go down. And when I say markets, I'm not saying the pricing, I'm saying the transaction numbers. One, uncertainty. If you're rooting for one team or the other, if you're team elephant or team donkey, you're kind of sitting like, oh, if my team wins, I'm gonna go jump in. If my team doesn't win, I'm gonna sit there. Number two, uh, the candidates explaining their policies. Do those policies line up with your long-term goals? Regarding policies, gotta remember, just because they say they're gonna do something doesn't mean it's gonna happen, and they still gotta get everything pushed through Congress. It could take upwards of a year for a policy that they're talking about to actually make it into law. Some people are still waiting that, and that will put them on the sidelines. Lastly, and this is the one I fully believe in, consumer confidence. If your guy's gonna win and you've got your plan laid out, you're very confident, you're very excited, you are gonna make a move. Your consumer confidence will go down if you do not know who's going to win for starters and then what their policies will be down the line so that kind of makes you sit back and kind of wonder what's going on as well so just those three items will kind of put people on the sideline until the election post-election the election happens everyone finds out who wins and the policies are explained then they make their own decision so no matter what who wins 50 percent of the country is going to be upset the 50 percent that generally loses kind of sits on the sideline for another three to six months the people who whose candidate won they tend to go kind of crazy and they tend to just jump in so you will see a pickup after the election and what's really interesting so going back nearly 10 cycles uh nine out of ten the first year of the new presidents or re-elected president's uh, term tends to be the good year. And I will attest, 2021 was my best year ever. I didn't even notice this until I started doing a little research. And it is noticeable for the realtors. Honestly, I was anticipating a uh, collapse about a year, year and a half ago, just due to the low inventory. Obviously, we have not seen that. If you're gonna sell your house or you're gonna purchase your house, especially on the purchase end, these are long-term decisions. Just have the mindset you're gonna be in that house for 10 years plus. It really doesn't matter a whole lot who wins. It'll probably make a couple percentage points one way or another on what you have to pay for your house or what you have to sell for house. When I say percentage points, I'm talking about percentage of the house that you're gonna have to pay for. $200,000 house, maybe it's gonna be 205 or 195, depending on the upcoming policies in the next month. Interest rates, both parties are trying to push those down. We'll just wait and see. But again, you have to feel comfortable with your note. You got to feel comfortable with your purchase. So if you're buying, you just have to feel very comfortable because no matter who's in the White House, you are have to boil it down to yourself and the house that you're purchasing. On the sales side, it doesn't, again, make a whole lot of difference because the earth is going to keep spinning. You have to feel comfortable with the sale. You have to fulfill your goals. Right now, if you do sell, it's very difficult to find another house. And that's why so few houses are making it the market. I can tell you right now, the realtors, we want to see more of an even market. It's great when you list a house and there's 10 offers, but these buyers are getting the crap kicked out of them. Just want to see the balance of power between buyers and sellers a little more more even. Now it's fine to have a little bit of a buyer's market, a little bit of a seller's market. The reason why many people do not sell their houses right now is because they don't have a place to live once they do sell their house. Now, of course, if you got a job transfer or something like that, a divorce, of course, but most people are waiting for interest rates to get to about five and a half percent. I think that's kind of the happy zone where people will give up their 2.9% interest rate because their goal is now much more obtainable and a lot less painful to give up that low interest rate. There is an opportunity for buyers. And I feel right now in the next 45 days up until election day, you might actually be able to snipe a, a house here and there um you know these sellers they're watching the day counter so are the buyers and if you come in with a very reasonable offer and a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines but the house is already on the market you might actually be able to get something i'm always in the mindset where i'm constantly a buyer for my own portfolio so i'm kind of watching and i just saw a, a couple of price reductions in the city of milwaukee so some of these big time sellers they're kind of sitting there watching the day counter go up and up and up they, they might be willing to go negotiate a little more or more importantly, there'll be less competition. A real quick recap of what I'm saying here. Does the election have an effect on the day-by-day -day deals of a market up until and then shortly after the election? Yes, but it's not much, as much as you think it is. At the end of the day, a lot of those sales are just pushed back to the following year once we know what's going to happen with the new administration or the current administration. So once you remove the question mark of who's going to be president, a lot of those sales are basically postponed from September, October 24 until January, February, March of 25. It's interesting because it is consistent. Every cycle you do see this. Nine out of 10 last cycles, there was a decrease in transactions prior to the election. 2008, 
is a notable exception. We do not talk about 2008. So if you watch the cycles, it's not that big of a deal. It's mostly consumer confidence. But I guess in 2024, because it's such a big seller's market, there might actually be a spot for a buyer to grab a house prior to the election being settled. That's it for today. Like and subscribe if you like my lighthearted commentary on the current real estate market with a little bit of nostalgia just for fun. Take care.